Filipino giving me shoes. My name is James McDonald, ex-member of the Mob Pyro game. Used to go by Mob James. A lot of people know me by. I've been knowing Suge Knight since I think I was 14, 15 when we really like kind of clicked. We was riding motorcycles together. We used to go out to Devil's Dip. Uh, his mama wouldn't allow him to hang with other people, so I would have to meet him around the corner to go riding. Come back, the first thing you hear, Miriam, get in the house, don't hang with them people. And we went to Linwood High together. Uh, when I got out to penitentiary in 1988, me and Suge, Suge came to the house and got me and looked out for me. We started doing security for uh, his cousin, Big West. And uh, we started doing the Budweiser Superfest. And from there, it went to Fern Hill Records. From that, it went to Death Row. And this is where we are now. I was an active gang member. We don't see, we, we don't have the big homie thing. We didn't do the big homie thing. We didn't do, that's the OG. We had older guys in there, but we didn't have leaders. We did us and everything was, when I say us, was together. I, I, I never had a leader. I wouldn't consider that and didn't consider myself as a leader. I was a willing participant, should I say. <laughs> we was doing us. Nobody from the mob knew Suge. Nobody from the mob ever dealt with Suge but me. When Suge came and got me, I brought everybody else. I introduced everybody to Suge. We was behind the scene thugs, pretty much, and we took care of the rough part. Alton and all of them, me and Buntry, my brother, everybody was in the penitentiary. And when they was getting out the penitentiary, I, should I say, we started recruiting him. I start bringing him in. And that's how he know everybody. You know, Suge asked me, how many bloods can you get? I need everybody at the concert. How many you want? So we wind up 45, 50 cats up there behind stage. It's, it's nothing but bloods. So he's starting to meet these guys and he's looking like, damn, Suge is amazed. Never been around that many bloods in his life. So from that point, when you got so many bloods now, and this is all you got, and all these guys are from the penitentiary, from the penitentiary. He's seen the reaction of other people backstage. Like, they didn't want to mess with Suge because of this. Suge went to college. 90% 90, 90 of us ain't went no college. We ain't went nowhere. But Suge came to the hood and used that, and he manipulated, and he did his thing. When, when, one of the homies got mad at Suge. His only way out of that was to pay his way out of that. And everybody accepted that. Even myself, I'm guilty of it. When I was mad at Suge, man, you said, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> man, go to the office, I got something for you, man. Okay. Oh, 2,500? I'm gonna get mad at him all the time. Money is evil. Money, money make you blind and, and wasn't nobody looking at the big picture at the time. Well, I met Tupac when, when Suge was initially trying to get him out of jail. And and it was a good look for Death Row because Suge passed up a lot of good people, Bow Wow, a lot of people. So when he got Tupac out of jail, Tupac came straight from the airport to the studio and started working. I mean, he was in there rapping, doing his thing. Everything came to him. Food, girls, jewelry, clothes, whatever. Everything came right there to him. When I met him, he seemed cool. When he got more comfortable, should I say, in death row, then his demeanor, he changed into something he totally wasn't. But he was in front of my power rule. And he, when he started acting like he was from the hood, now we got a problem. But it wasn't a problem because he was bringing money. You know what I'm saying? And this way, everybody failed to realize and, and stop looking at the big picture. Like, in the hoods, you got brothers, they got to get jumped in or they got to be real good. If you saying this dude going to make us fat, okay, he cool. There's no rules. So he came in like that. And once he got there and he started hanging and, and just start seeing how the homies walked, he started walking like that. 
all of a sudden he popped up with a mob tattoo. That's something is is something everybody just don't go get because they from the hood. Wait a minute, you ain't been here a day. You ain't from the hood. You ain't you ain't spilled no blood. You ain't you ain't did no drive-bys. You ain't shoot nobody. You ain't doing nothing. So he didn't earn that. He didn't earn that. And now this is how I feel. We got a lot of brothers dead behind MOP. You know what I'm saying? And then he come in and and just because you a rapper, you think you could put the mob on you. I didn't like it. When he came with Suge, I asked Suge, why do we got that on there? Huh, man, you know he with it. You know, shit, he, he, he finna be one of us. I'm outnumbered now because everybody is liking Tupac. Everybody is liking Suge now. Everybody is, they, they got Suge back now. Everybody is saying, okay, I ain't got to rob no more. I ain't got to do this no more. So everybody got Suge back and more, Mob, you tripping. You drinking too much. Mob, you on one. No, I'm not on one, but this is us. He just can't walk in here and be that dude. You know what I'm saying? So everything that was wrong was right for everybody else because they was getting money from these cats. The only rival the mob had with South Sides before Death Row is that they was Crips, we was blood. It is what it is. We run into each other, that's what it was. It didn't have nothing to do with, with this situation was a music situation. Brothers in the neighborhood, and I gotta explain this to y'all, everybody ain't got money. So when they came on the scene, just like Suge, it was an opportunity to stop doing what we're doing and get this cheddar right now. And we ain't got to put ourselves, go to jail, to penitentiary for robberies, and doing whatever we're doing. This easy money right here. And it's something I do best. If I can go out here and fight my rivals and get paid for it, I'm good. Let's roll. Let's do this. And that's what it was on both sides. A lot of people don't understand. Everybody was like, the mob is tripping off the of south side because... Southside is doing this. No, this is not a red and blue thing. It turns into that because this is how people, this is how your perception is because this is what you see. Two different gangs in Compton, never liked it each other, why should we? And here they are, they're getting paid for beating up each other, trying to snatch jewelry because they're getting paid for it. Those guys was greedy and hungry. 10,000? Let me see one. I'm snatching it. Well, them cats fail to realize my mama got on the, one of them chains that she had passed out for, for Mother's Day. Gave them nice little, little, little chains. So these guys didn't care who they got the chain from. They were snatching them. Oh, no, now y'all in violation. You know what I'm saying? So then this is when this incident happened at the, at the mall. Now it's bigger than that. Well, everybody know who it was. Trayvon got his shit snatched, or they tried to snatch his shit. He fought, he got his chain back. Now, we got a problem. These cats done crossed the line. They done got at one of the homies. And who was it that jumped Trayvon? Baby Lane. He's, he's with the business. And everybody's sitting there talking about, oh, he just doing it for the money. No, this is something Baby Lane do. He's a gangbanger. He's with it. He's not no... The young, the young cat, and give him credit, he was with it. You know what I'm saying? And Trayvon, he wasn't finna let him do it. He couldn't come back to our circle and say, they got me. So he did what he had to do to keep it. So now there's a problem. Now everybody is flared up. Oh, this how they getting down? Oh, for 10 grand, this is what he want to do? Now there's all eyes on me. We see you, we getting you. And everybody failed to realize Suge ain't getting in this car with you to go over there and get at these cats. You know what I'm saying? They didn't understand it. And they sure didn't want to hear me. So, okay, let them do what they do. That, that chain escalated everything. So nothing mattered last year, last week, or the day before that. What he did trying to get that chain puts us where we at now. We got to get these cats. We had a uh, function at 662, and uh, 
with all of this going on with South Sides or whatever, we was hearing that they so-called they self was coming to Vegas. So we had a red alert. Everybody was supposed supposed to be ready. Me and the and the majority of the other guys from the neighborhood was at six six two. I was watching the front door and the back. I was out on the parking lot in front of the in front of the club. I see the Cadillac. That's South Side right there. So there's some other police up there, there's police up there, and they took off. They said about maybe five minutes, and they left. When they left, I called out to them and told them that they South Side's up here. So we was ready at 662. I don't know what they left for. They, like I said, they said like five minutes. I'm standing right here. They was parked like right where the driveway is. When you go in the driveway to go to the back, they stopped right there. But at first, yeah, like as if they was finna come in. So I'm standing right here. I think, uh, I'm not sure if it was Hand Dog or, or, or somebody, but they were standing right here. And I said, that's outside right there. When, when they saw us there, so he probably just like, no, maybe this ain't the right time. This is whoop whoop. They probably seen all the police that was around over there, and they drove off. I don't know what was on his mind, but they didn't stay there. After that, I'm, I'm doing my job. So then we get the phone call that Tupac and Sugar just got shot. What? Now, this incident that happened at the MG, at the MGM was not supposed to happen, but they bumped heads with each other. And when they seen each other, the incident happened. Well, I know they jumped him. Uh, Trey said, Trey told them that that ain't go right there. That little motherfucker go right there. Tupac took it upon himself, which he should have mind his business, like I said, and let the homies handle that. You ain't from the hood, so this not your business. But he trying to prove himself, took off. And when he took off, everybody else took off, which was going to happen anyway. Tupac was the, the, the smallest part of this equation. It, it wasn't about Tupac at first. Tupac made himself the bigger man. When Tupac had 30 cats behind him, when Tupac knew that can't nobody hurt him because he got all these guys, Tupac changed. Tupac was spitting on people. Tupac was bumping into people. His attitude changed totally. And this is what led to Tupac's demise because if Tupac would have mind his business, he had all these other the gangsters that was gonna take care of that anyway. If Tupac would have stood on the side and watched, and if Suge would have said, no, you my money, you ain't finna get in no fight, get over there. Tupac would be still alive right now today. And this is the only reason why he died. He interfered in something he had no power in. Everybody is like, like going crazy. Is he all right? What's going on? Everybody was starting to leave and wanted to leave. Suge assured everybody he gonna be all right. Everybody was like, wow, Suge told everybody he got hit. The bullet hit his medallion. Supposed to hit his chain. Everybody started partying. Okay, like he gonna be cool. Haron came up to me and said, he ain't all right. Haron left and supposed to went to the hospital. And from that point, Haron never came back to the club. Everybody was at the hospital. Talking about Tupac was dying. He was going to die. He wasn't doing too good. Right at that point, after the shooting, they came to the club, South Side, just dumped on us. And that's all was said. So from that point, now we got to regroup and say, okay, it's on with South Side. And that's all that was. Tick for tat. Y'all get ours, we going to get y'alls. Everybody got to understand. Everybody know it's Southside. We just had an altercation here. A a a a a little thug just got beat up in the in the in the MGM. Ain't nobody else there for it. Everybody know who did it. Everybody know what the reason was for. He just went for the direct target. He went straight after who hit him. Retaliation is a motherfucker. We the homies. They had, everybody had a meeting, said, got down together, and, well, we know who did it. We know Southside did it. 
Now retaliation is south side. It ain't directed toward land. <clears throat> so that's that's all that was. And he came, his name just started coming out because he was taking credit for it. He started telling people he did that. We decided it I mean basically his own. They just killed Tupac. And not because they just killed Tupac. This was my thing. Tupac was hanging with us. So everybody is looking at this as Tupac, the mob let Tupac get killed. So we couldn't have that. So it was just basically a, a not happening on our watch kind of thing. This, this the mob, this is, we lose all kind of credibility. We lose everything if we, if we let that slide. That's just like losing the homie to another hood and just wash it away and say, okay, cool. What's gonna happen after that? They gonna come back and get another one. So let's stop it now. We'd have lost more if 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 the hood would have said, well, shit, Tupac really went from the hood anyway. It didn't matter. He got killed on our watch. From a Compton nigga, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you do the math. There was no choice. Well, I mean, if you don't, if you stop coming and hanging in a certain area, ain't nobody finna go out there looking for you. Gangbangers ain't, ain't ain't private eyes. They ain't finna go sit and wait and and and. Now we we do our homework, but they wasn't hanging on the block like that. It ain't like we didn't know what street they was on, but those streets was empty. They wasn't stupid. They, I mean, if they knew his own and and there's going to be retaliation, let's not hang out like this, or let's hang further back in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, when you're in the car driving and you're looking for something, you ain't driving like that. Because everybody knows if you're driving like that and the window's down, they're going to start shooting at you before you start shooting at them. Everybody in the neighborhood know that. So riding around looking for something, you don't see it, let's roll. Let's roll. You didn't have Shug Knight in no cars trying to, trying to get the person that killed Tupac. And this his best friend. He didn't have that game banging mentality like, like, like we do. Suge wasn't quick to react when something like that happened. You know what I'm saying? If, if Tupac was my partner, if I gave a F about Tupac, it's right now. You know what I'm saying? This how I'd, you react in the hood when you lose the homie. It's right now. It's not next week. You know what I'm saying? After it was discussed, which everybody, after the meeting, after the gathering, after, you know, after that conversation, he should have been ready. How is it that we, riding in Calax, I'm talking about 77 Calax, not no new shit, and the Chug is riding in Benz's, Porsches, and all this, but we are still in Compton. When we leave Compton, we go into Bel Air, Beverly Hills, to his house. We not living like that. But we still doing what we doing here. And half of the guys was mad already because, man, why am I getting 800 and he getting 1500? You know what I'm saying? But when we fight each other, here we go again. <laughs> go to the office. He giving you a check, he gonna put you in an apartment, he gonna get you a motorcycle, he gonna get you a car. Sooner or later, he gonna try to take it back. You know what I'm saying? When he went to jail, Shug told everybody to turn their cars in. <laughs> One cat out of all of them said, nigga, fuck you. When he got a pink slip made and, and sold the car and got his money out of it. You know what I'm saying? Shug wasn't worth it at that point. So when I felt that it was time to go, it was already crumbling. It was already tore up and nothing changed. It was getting worse and worse every day you go to the office. Everybody was unhappy. If you get any cat in here, Trayvon or anybody that worked for Death Row and say they was happy, he's a damn lie. Look at his, look at his financial records. Ain't nobody got no money that worked for Death Row. Nobody, no, no Buntries, no Mob James, no Timmy Rules, no Trays, no Rocks, nobody. If, if, if you're still alive, you broke. If you're still alive, you're doing time in the penitentiary because you had to find another way to make some money 
because he wasn't paying you right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we got the short end of the stick, but we asked for that. You know what I'm saying? Because we allowed him. You got straight thug cats allowed this new cat to come in here and, and, and pay how he wanted to pay. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't Shug's fault. That's our fault. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of things he did, you got to ask yourself now. He's sitting in jail, crying, pretending to die. I'm blind, passing out. This ain't no gangster. This ain't no thug, nigga. And everybody's still saying they love this dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I lost more than anybody. I lost my brother to Death Row Records. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it kills me that, that these people can still say they love Suge. Suge is a clown. Suge is afraid of being where he's at because he ain't never walked this shit that we walked. He ain't us. Never been. But he's getting all his credit. Sugar gave the one that was picking people up, slamming them on the ground. He wasn't the one knocking people out. It was us. It was it was the cats behind him. You know, excuse me, but at my my uh, I introduced my brother to this dude when he got out of the penitentiary. Can you stop for a minute? Everybody that passed. And in, in, in this circle, it's, it's, it's all inside. It's not, my brother didn't die by no crips. The homies, his friends, it's, it's, we, we breaking bread. And for sugar money, none of us got it. At the end of the day, everybody broke. Everybody is broke. Everybody is still in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody got nothing. So it was a waste of time and a waste of lives. Tupac and everybody else from under, up under that. It was a waste. A lot of people got their own assumptions. Everybody is saying what they want to say, but a lot of people that is talking are on the outside of this. A lot of people that is talking heard it from him, him, and him. And then when they bring the story to me, it's watered down or it's souped up so it sounds good. Now I want to listen to you talk. Told it, everybody that was there, should say they peace. I mean, it's a relief for me because, I mean, it's like, my brother been gone 15 years now. 15 years now. You don't hear nothing about him. You don't hear nobody speaking on him. All you hear is, Buntry was the driver. Buntry did this. Mob James then was in the van. It's, it's more to, to, to him, for me, than just that. You know what I'm saying? What did he really do for Death Row? How was they really getting down in death row? Every February the 5th, I go through something. And that's my brother's birthday. I go, can I call it guilt? Yes. Uh, I just feel a certain kind of way about it. And you know, I don't care what people say, how they feel about me. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about none of that. I just think it's time. It's time and I feel good letting it out. I feel good saying fuck shit. I feel good that people know how I feel and what type of cat y'all really liking. He ain't the one, that, it, totally different from what they see. They can't say I'm lying. That's one thing they can't say. They can't say, oh, no, he, he wasn't there. They can't say that. They can't say he don't know Suge. Yes, I do. I brought him here to you niggas. You know what I'm saying? They can't say that. So. To have somebody that really been there, been on the inside, and know this is whatever, this is clear it all up, and whatever it takes to clear it up, that's what we need. That's just like exposing the devil, and that's why I'm here. That's what that's that's the only thing that matters to me, exposing the devil. Valentino giving me soup.